Good evening. Before we call our meeting to order, since this is an organizational meeting, if we have to first appoint a president pro tem, I would like to make a motion to appoint Ms. Karen Witt Gagne as president pro tem. Do we have a second? Second. We're moved and second. See no questions, maybe we vote. Okay. But how do I address this? Mr. Smith? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Ms. Reynard? Yes. Mr. Sampson? Yes. Ms. Wigani? Yes. Dr. Pickett? She's not here. She has uh, excused absence. Okay. Dr. Goodwin? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Six yeses. You want to do it from there? That is fine. That is fine. So you have to call us to order right. and do roll call. Yeah. Yeah. Good evening. Let the record show that the Dayton Public School Board of Education is now entering its January 10th, 2023 organizational meeting. May I have a roll call, please? Yes. Uh, President Pro Temp. Wigani. Present. Mr. Smith. Present. Ms. Reinhardt. Present. Mr. Sampson. Here. Uh, Dr. Pickett is not here. Dr. Goodwin. Here. Mr. Lacey. Here. Six present. Thank you. Our first order, well, welcome everybody. First order of business this evening is to elect our pledge of allegiance. Oh, oh, shoot, I forgot. Sorry. Pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, first order of business this evening is to elect our leadership for next year. At this time, I will open the floor for nominations for president of the Dayton Public School Board of Education. I nominate myself. I'll second. Any other nominations? We'll have a vote, Treasurer. Are there questions on the motion? Questions? Questions. Oh, I'm sorry, Jocelyn. Thank you. Um, I was wondering, um, you know, when we, when we went through this process, when we go through this process every year, there's usually extensive conversations behind the scenes, um, board members laying out um, their vision for where they see the district going the next year. Um, I recall when I was um, having those conversations a year ago, um, asking for support as vice president. Um, you know, I had, I reached out to every single board member and I talked to them about what I felt we needed to do and where we needed to go. Um, given the conversation that we had at the board meeting last month about working collaboratively, I was really surprised that nobody reached out to me. And I've, I've heard recently that there have been a number of conversations about leadership this year, but there's been no effort to reach out to me and talk to me about um, people desiring to serve. And I'm a little bit confused about um, the desire that we have to work collaboratively. And I would like to ask you, board member, um, Dr. Goodwine, what is your vision for the board this year? Really to really expound on the momentum we've had last year to continue to not only grow us in ways and push us in ways that we haven't been but to go deeper and not just us have what I consider real, like even our committee work. I mean, I, there's some suggestions if I am elected, which someone else does run against me and when that's fine too. There are some things I would like to send out to people to see how you guys would like to serve on what I believe the committee should be next year and just expand, expanding that totally. 
I appreciate that. Do you have a commitment to work collaboratively with every single board member? Have you thought about how you'd like to reach out if you're going to reach out to them regularly? Have you, are you going to commit to reaching out to every single board member regularly? Are you going to commit to working collaboratively? Have you thought about the need for an updated five-year plan? Have you thought about the need for um, setting out a board retreat schedule so that we can really tighten the things that we're working on? Um, there was a lot of really weak leadership on that last year, and I was wondering if there was going to be an effort to tighten that up at all. I guess we'll see, Jocelyn. I mean, I've committed the same commitment that everyone else has on this board in the duty of when we take the oath of office. Was there a reason why you didn't reach out to me and talk to me about this? I, we don't talk outside of the board meetings, Jocelyn. This is where we talk, but we're talking right now. You just asked those questions. I, that's not true. <laughs> I heard that there were conversations about you I asking said, for support. said we don't talk, meaning you and I don't have personal conversations outside of here. So where is Jocelyn, your... Is this, again, are you doing... No, I'm happening? honestly looking for what's best for this district, and I want to make sure that we are committed to working collaboratively. I don't have anything else to add. Okay, thank you. Um, does any other board member have anything they'd like to add before we make a vote or place a vote? No. I mean, I... Go ahead. I, I would like to add that I believe that we're all committed to this board. Um, it's been a, you know, we've had a big year here, up here. There are always big years. There's always big opportunities around. Um, my experience with Dr. Goodwine and the board and uh, all of my board team, it, it is my commitment that we work collaborative, collaboratively together. And in my discussion with Dr. Goodwine, with board member Smith, with board member Sampson. Um, the, the discussion is always around how we can work with our board to become the best serving board for our students at DPS. Um, we want to serve our customers, our students, and our work is committed to that. Um, and to, of course, recognizing that each board member brings their own unique skill set and talents to this board and really bringing us back together. You have my commitment. I have always been uh, maybe uh, kind of deemed the mother of the board a bit because I'm probably the oldest one of us all. Um, so you have my personal commitment that I'm going to work collaboratively and I will encourage all of my board team to work collaboratively. I have always reached out to my board members to, to get a pulse on how they're feeling, to get a sense on where they're going and I will make sure that we push leadership this year in that direction. So to answer your questions, board member Spencer Reiner, um, it is my hope that we will all continue to work collaboratively towards serving our students. So, and I think that Dr. Goodwine will definitely do that and work with each board member. Thank you. And I'd like to add that I do appreciate Dr. Goodwine stepping up. I feel there, we're at a, a big time in our district. We have a lot of projects going on that we started uh, last year. And we had a conversation about making sure that the work goes on, that work that needs to go on to make sure these projects and some of the big projects that we're working on, uh, momentum doesn't stop on that. So I really appreciate Dr. Goodwine stepping up and I'm eager to see that leadership that she has already shown uh, as being a member of this board. So I look forward to seeing that and I just wanna say I appreciate you, Dr. Goodwine. Okay, a vote. I, get, I forget I'm in charge. Okay. Okay. President, President uh, Pro Temp Wigani? Yes. Uh, Mr. Smith? Yes. Ms. Reinhardt? No. Uh, Mr. Samson? Yes. Ms. Uh, Kay, she's not here. Okay. Dr. Goodwin? Yes. Uh, Mr. Lacey? Yes. Okay. Four yeses, one no. Five yeses. Uh, oh, five yeses and one no. <laughs> I put it on the top. Congratulations, Dr. Oh, yeah. Goodwin, our new board president. Super proud. First time a woman president in a few oh, years. Thank you. Uh, I'll now open the floor for nominations for our vice president. 
I would like to nominate Board Member Sampson for Vice President. Um, I respectfully decline. Thank you for the nomination. Okay. I'll nominate Mr. Smith for Vice President. If there are no other nominees, I would, would not mind. I'll second the nomination. Thank you. Are there questions on the motion? Are there questions on the motion? I have a question. I, I would you. like to say I'm disheartened and disappointed, though not entirely surprised, at the nomination of Mr. Smith to the role of Vice President. Throughout the course of the past several months, this board has illustrated a commitment to preserving a politics as usual environment at the expense of what is in the best interest of this district and students that are meant to be protected by this board. It is our duty as board members to not only set positive examples and act as role models, but to serve, protect, and promote safe and supportive environments. I have made no secret of my concerns related to Mr. Smith. I have alluded in these public arenas over the past several months that his specific behavior crossed a professional line and made me feel deeply uncomfortable. I did not ask for any investigation actions as a result of these events. I had, however, hoped that the board would have seen the need to push forward a policy that would have protected others in the future. Support never came, baseline policies never came, protections for future board members never came. Instead, I was bullied, both privately and publicly, shamed and accused of lying and leveraging the instance the incident as an opportunity. I was intimidated and prevented from completing my work as a board member, all in an effort to protect Mr. Smith's reputation. To now witness this board nominate him to vice president here speaks volumes. Where they had been simply silent and complicit before by now voting Mr. Smith to the role as vice president, the board will be going to, taking a step further by publicly endorsing and advocating his actions. Actions which again were witnessed publicly and recorded and reported. I implore the board to think about this decision and its implications. No matter the outcome here tonight, I will never abandon my dedication and commitment to the students, parents, and citizens of this community. A commitment which motivates me to do the right thing. Before this vote, I'm asking the board again to consider their own motivations and commitment to this role as well. Is this truly in the best interest of this community? Or is this the result of political maneuvering in an effort to close ranks and protect the mirage of reputation? My question is, does this board take accusations of sexual harassment seriously? That is all I have. Are there, would anyone like to um, add any more discussion around this? Um, the issue on the table of electing our next vice president? Um, I had actually nominated Mr. Sampson. I had no, there have been no conversations around doing any of the things that have just been insinuated. And then on top of that, I will say that this board has already had numerous conversations in executive sessions and with legal representation on the things that have been brought up. These things have been discussed and brought up with legal representation multiple times as this board and there has been no bullying of anybody on this board as a matter of fact one of the things that was just brought up was the retreat schedules and things such as that those things have been constantly put out and people on the board decided not to or said they couldn't make it so what we have done uh, continuously since last year is to open up leadership opportunities for those on this board as president last year i allowed multiple people to bring forth things as they wanted to, as well as today, looking at how do we keep bringing in new leadership. Um, I take umbrage at saying that anybody is trying to close ranks of anything at this board, because there has been no ranks at this board. No one on this board has gone through and voted the same way on each time. No one on this board has colluded to make votes go. One of the things that we saw previously on different things is that there is a usual round robin discussion on who wants to be in leadership and all these things and i appreciate that there was no long discussion on these things of who's going to do what and who's going to sit where as i walked in today my mind was on 
nominating someone who also came on this board with me, uh, someone I want to see step into leadership. So that is my stance. As I said before, we have already discussed these things with our, um, our team, our legal team, multiple legal counsel. Um, and that is where we have been inside and in our executive sessions and having those discussions that I myself actually set out of. So we've discussed those things and tonight is no attempt to close any ranks on anything. And so that is where I leave that. Is there any other questions? Ready for a vote. Okay. President Pro Temp uh, Wigani. Yes. Yes for, for who? We're voting on uh, Vice President. Or, uh, We're Dian voting on Vice President. He declined. Dian declined. Okay. Dian declined? He did. Okay, so yes. Uh, Mr. Smith? Yes. Ms. Reinhardt? No. Mr. Sampson? Yes. Dr. Pickett is not here. Um, <coughs> Good, Dr. Goodwine? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Five yeses, one no. Okay. Okay. Congratulations, Mr. Smith, new vice president of our board next year. I think at this time we uh, will rearrange the dais and you know, Parliament they have to swear. Swear in? Are we yeah. swearing in? So you will do that swearing yeah. in? Thank you. Um, all right, so we got, we, are we going to do the parliamentarian first too? I'd like to make a nomination of Joe Lacey of our parliamentarian this year. I, Dr. Cassandra Goodwine. Do solemnly affirm that. Do solemnly affirm that. I will support the Constitution. I will support the Constitution. And the laws of the United States of America. And the laws of the United States of America. And the Constitution and the laws of the state of Ohio. And the Constitution and the laws of the state of Ohio. And that. And that. I will faithfully. I will faithfully, honestly, honestly, and impartially, and impartially discharge the duties of the office. Discharge the duties of the office of the president of the board of education. Of the president of the board of education. Of the Dayton City School District. Of the Dayton City School District. Montgomery County. Montgomery County. Ohio. Ohio. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. And in accordance. And in accordance with. The laws now in effect. With the laws now in effect. And hereafter. And hereafter. To be enacted. To be enacted. During my constituents in office. During my continuance in office. Thank you. That's fun. Congratulations. Can I get a picture? Can I get a picture in front of you? Get my
my dating in the picture. You know, <laughs> you see us out here. I, William Smith, do solemnly affirm, do solemnly affirm that I will support, that I will support the Constitution, the Constitution, and the laws of the United States of America, and the laws of the United States of America, and the Constitution, and the Constitution, and the laws of the State of Ohio, and the laws of the State of Ohio, and that I will faithfully, and that I will faithfully. Honestly, honestly and impartially and impartially impartially discharge the duties of the office discharge the duties of the office of the vice president of the vice president of the board of education of the board of education of the Dayton City School District of the Dayton City School District Montgomery County Ohio Montgomery County Ohio to the best of my ability to the best of my ability and in accordance with the laws in accordance with the laws now in effect now in effect and hereafter and hereafter to be enacted to be enacted during my continuance during during my continuance in office in office congratulations thank you can i get a picture Correct. Mm -hmm. All right, I like the point, Mr. Lacey. Well, there's something wrong with the way um, <laughs> the previous parliamentarian. <laughs> oh, he can do it. <laughs> I accept, or I mean, I, I accept the nomination. I suppose I didn't. I think it's just an appointment. It is an appointment. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> Then I accept I'll do it. I've done it before. Sounds great. 
Okay, so now we are on to board resolutions for a vote. That's great. Yeah. Okay. So as a part of the business of the annual organization meeting, the board will now vote on the following resolutions. B, establishing board meeting dates for 2023. C, resolutions for renewing memberships in the Ohio State Board Association. D, resolutions for renewing memberships in the Ohio State Board Association Legal Assistance Fund. E, resolutions for advanced payment of taxes. F, resolutions authorizing the use of media <coughs> signatures. And G, resolutions to approve the certificate of enrollment and resolution to establish the service fund. I move that we adopt these Madam President, can we can we vote on um, E separately? So that it, I'm not. I don't believe that it is. I, I want to abstain from that it, because it, it okay. does have something to do with my job, just for appearance purposes. That's fair. Madam President, if I may, mm -hmm. um, I just want to correct. You said for item C and D, Ohio State Board Association and Ohio State Board Association. It's Ohio School Board Association and Ohio School Board Association Legal Appreci Assistance Fund. Appreciate that. Can that be corrected in the minutes as well? Clarification. Madam President, are we voting on all of these together versus separate? Is that the? With the that, exception of E, it looks like it is all packaged together. Would you like to vote on them individually? I would. That's correct. All right, that's not a problem. So I move that we, I move that we adopt B, establishing the board meeting dates for 2023. There's second. I'll second. It's been moved. The second. Are there any questions? Then. The November, the November 21st, is that not like during a holiday or is it too close? It, Thanksgiving's just two days before. later. Yeah. I don't know if you want to move that or we can consider that later. It doesn't matter. I don't have a preference. Is it, does anybody else want to think about it? We typically um, do not have a board meeting during that Thanksgiving week. It's usually the week before, which pushes everything up. But the last time, if you recall, we had a board, we had a review session on election night. And if there yes. are board members that are actually running, yes. that can be that Challenging. Can be a problem. Understood. So you may want to combine your review session and your board voting business session uh, to one meeting in November. That, mm -hmm. that would be an option. So that would be the week before that. Then that way you, you miss election week and you miss Thanksgiving week. OK. And we can, yeah, and we can like closer to that time, seeing what's going on with the board, we probably can make that decision to make a change on that one. Does the time still work for everybody, 5.30? Yes. Okay. And individuals that may be on policy or finance, does meeting during the working day work for everybody on the board, just in case you guys get put there? Is that fine for you all? It works for me. All right. Madam President, yes, I would like it doesn't have to be tonight, but I would like for us to consider a start time of six o'clock p.m. Um, for those in our community who would like to start attending our meeting. Um, so I just wanted to put that on the record that I would like for us to consider changing our start time to six p.m. How would you feel about us doing like maybe the re review at five thirties and the business meetings where we actually vote at six? Um, I would like for a start time to be consistent. Um, you said do review at 5.30 and business at 6. The, so the Tuesday review sections continue with our 5.30 part right there, but since we actually vote consistently on things at business meetings, those ones always start at 6 where the public actually can speak. Um, as long as that's not confusing to the community, um, I'm open to it. Do, does anyone on the board have thoughts about those times, as well as the staff that work here as well? Go ahead. Um, when I when we first started, I first started on the board. We started a meeting at six, so I mean it was nice. We changed to five thirty, and I do believe that half hour provides a little time for our families to get a little more gathered. Um, so I'm I'm amenable to either so okay what do other board members have thoughts on that time and yeah. our, what is our community yeah. what is I'm, that i'm great with six o'clock if, if anybody wants us to keep any at 5 30 this that's really the question right now the 5 30 is necessary superintendent have you what's your experience with meetings and i mean is there start times 
this this board has gone back and forth. We've had the six o'clock. We've had the five thirty. Uh, we even talked at one point about a five o'clock, which was not realistic for uh, anyone to come and speak. So it really, uh, if it's a long if it's a long board meeting, uh, it is difficult for all of us who've worked all day, meaning all of you as well. Uh, but I don't know that half an hour is going to make that much of a difference either way. They they both have. I mean, we've used them both since I've been superintendent. Board Member Reiner, do you have a preference on either? I do not. Board I, Member Lacey? I acknowledge the superintendent's um, note that um, it makes for a slightly longer day, particularly for employees. Um, I think the difficulty is finding a time that works for everybody. Um, <coughs> there will always be times when it doesn't work for some people. And that's not to say that we shouldn't make every effort to try to um, get people the ability to attend board meetings and see what's happening and be involved. Um, but I have no preference. I would, I would prefer the 5.30. I, I mean, like, the, the meeting that went until midnight, that would have gone well into the next day, and I'm not sure about. But I, if, if the president would commit to trying to not seeing that happen again. Ooh, <laughs> topics get really intense up there sometimes. What, does the split work for you guys? Does the, the split would work, right? Okay, would the split work on any objections to the splitting review sessions at 5.30, business meetings at 6? Especially since by the business meeting we should have reviewed most of the stuff we're talking about at that day. Okay, I'd like to make a amendment to the initial motion. I'll second the amendment. Let me say it, Jack. <laughs> I appreciate it. Appreciate that. I like that. Ending. I just like to amend the, the start time of our business meetings to be 6 p.m. instead of 5.30. So I'll second it. It's been moved and second. Are there any questions on the amendment? Madam Treasurer, can we have a vote? Okay. President Goodwin? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Ms. Reinhardt? Yes. Mr. Sampson? Yes. Uh, Dr. Pickett is not here. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Wigany? Yes. Okay. And Mr. Lacey? Yes. Okay. S six yeses. All right, I move that we adopt resolution B, renewing member, C. C, I'm oh, sorry, resolution C, renewing membership in the Ohio School Board Association. Is there a second? Second. Move the second, are there any questions? Madam Treasurer, may we have a vote? Okay, President Goodwin? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Ms. Reinhardt? Yes. Mr. Sampson? Yes. Ms. Wigani? Yes. Okay. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Six yeses. I move that we adopt Resolution D, Renewing Membership in Ohio School Board Association Legal Assistance Fund. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved <coughs> a second. Are there any questions? Seeing none, Madam Treasurer, may we have a vote? President Goodwin? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Ms. Reinhardt? Yes. Mr. Samson? Yes. Yeah. Mrs. Uh, Wigany? Yes. And uh, Mr. Lacey? Uh, yes. Six yeses. I move that we adopt resolution, I mean, Board, res I'm sorry, I move that we adopt letter E, resolution, advancement payment of taxes in 2023. Is there a second? Second. Move the second. Are there any questions? Seeing none, may we have a vote? Dr. Goodwin? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Ms. Reinhardt? Yes. Mr. Sampson? Yes. 
Ms. Wigani? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Abstain. Five yeses, one abstain. I move that we adopt letter F. Are there, is there a second? A second. Move the second. Are there any questions? Madam Treasurer, may we have a vote? Dr. Goodway? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Ms. Reinhardt? Yes. Mr. Sampson? Yes. Mrs. Wigani? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Six yes. Yeses. I move that we adopt letter G. Is there a second? Second. second. So we move the second. Are there any questions? Question, Madam President. Go ahead, Board Member Sampson. Thank you so much. I want to make sure that the number listed um, as it relates to enrollment is correct as of October 2022. To the state's 12,116 as of October 2022. Is that a correct number? It is, uh, oh, gotcha. it is as of today. As of today? Yes. What was the enrollment number as of October 2022? Oh, I can check it. Someone's working on it. Thank you I'm so at, much. can you check? So, Madam President, I would like the correct number to be reflected into this document. Put an amendment. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes, I would like to make an amendment that we reflect 12,127 as of October 2022 in this uh, certificate of enrollment. I'm sorry, not today. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, October 2022. Paul. Yeah, you say motion, so it don't count. Yeah. <laughs> 13,868. Wow. We've had 13,000 students. Mm -hmm. Twelve thousand one hundred. You said twelve thousand one thirty-eight. No, today I know. So, Madam President, if I may, can we, does this have to be voted on today? Because there's been like three numbers given in a matter of two minutes. And I remember when we received the, the discipline data, the number of students was 12,700 and something. So I'm having a difficult time understanding the 13,000. I just want to make sure the number is correct. Okay, I have a question before you, because you pretty much want to table this to the next meeting. I would like okay. to, if it doesn't have to be Prior, part of that today. The, the code that is cited in here, does the code specify what date that that data has to be pulled from? And if so, is that date from the October 20, well, October 2022, or is it anybody who knows the answer to that question? From the statute that's put in here, of what is requiring to certify the number? just so we can make sure we get the accurate number. Okay, and what, is it the entire month of October? Because there's no actual date stated on here. Is it the entire month of October? Because it only says October, 2022. Um, 
not going to just look it up. <laughs> if, if there's no, uh, excuse me, Madam President, President, if there's no specific date that, that we need to report it, I would request that we report it, um, that we report it closer to today because we had a, a large number, if you recall, I updated the board and said that there were a lot of withdrawals that were not pulled yet. Uh, we have increased from, we were 11,000 something at the end of last year, but we were closer to 12,000 in real time and real numbers. So I would request that we use, a, we use the, a current date or a closer date to today because we were still withdrawing students in October. And that 13,000 is not an accurate number that, I've, that I'm aware of or have seen. So if we, can, okay. if we can use something that's closer, if it's not required to be October, uh, Amit? It's not required. It used to be the requirement in October. It's changed now. It's a daily, the week. Yeah. 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 It used to be a count week in October, and there used to be a count week in February, and that's how yeah. they did it. But if we can use the real number, because like I said, we, we still had a lot of withdrawals that we were finding through our ODEX system. Kids that had gone someplace else had not, who, who had en enrolled someplace else, and we had not withdrawn them. So a closer number would be the 12,000 number. I need a motion to type up. So, because there's already a motion on the floor, it's been first so, and second, you just have to vote it back. Or, rather, or, me and voting it back. I recommend that we vote it down, Madam. Is there, are there any more questions before we take a vote on it? Madam Treasurer, may we have a vote? President Goodwine? No. Mr. Smith? No. Mrs. Reinhardt? No. Mr. Sampson? No. Mrs. Wigani? No. Mr. Lacey? No. Mr. Lacey, yes? You said no. No. Okay. Oh, sorry. Six. No. So I will want to put out a motion to reconsider with the correct number at our next board meeting. Second that motion. It's been moved and second. Is, are there any questions? Nope. Madam Treasurer, may we have a vote? Dr. Goodwin? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Ms. Reinhardt? Yes. Mr. Sampson? Yes. Ms. Wickeny? Yes. Uh, Mr. Lacey? Yes. Six yeses. I do have a second question for you, because there were two resolutions mm -hmm. in there. The service fine. Uh, right. It goes uh, the same way okay. because you. So uh, yeah. Service yeah. fine is attached to the number. From because the one of them is the number of enrollments, the other one is the money. All right, we're good. It's time to pass the show on over. Superintendent, so your recommendation. I'd like to recommend, and this is for a vote, the human resources agenda that you see um, on the um, agenda. Move that we accept the recommendation. Is there a second? Second. So move the second. Are there any questions? Question, Madam President. You got the floor. Um, I would like to make an, um, um, an amendment. I would like to pull number 13, number 16, and number 75. Um, there are some more questions that I have before I can make um, a knowledgeable vote. Um, so if we could pull number 13, 16, and 75 um, until uh, further discussion, I would greatly appreciate it if that is the pleasure of the board. Second. Is there anything else anybody wants to know? Or remove from us? Any other questions? Okay, I have a question myself on number 80. There is a title change here and a 
higher rate than the last individuals that held this position. Can someone explain to me how this person is coming in with a new title and just how we got to the rate? Good evening, board. Congratulations, President Goodwine. Uh, that's not a new title. R Rayford has that title. He has the title in the district, so we have somebody with that title. And also, I thought because Craig Anderson is the first uh, that I can recall transportation director with a bachelor's and master's, he has extensive experience. And in my four months now being in transportation, I, I don't know that there's a tougher division in this, in this um, district. So I thought that was appropriate. What's the salary range for this? Start to, to cap. The cap is 121, which is what that should be there. We made a revision, it should be 120. So you said he's at the cap of the salary range? Mm -hmm. So there's no, no growth for, uh, from here for him? Uh, yeah, I think it's 2.5, is that right, Dr. Lally? Um, on the um, adopted salary schedule, um, in, 20, in fiscal year 25, um, there's a 2.5% increase that lasts for 25, 26, 27, then an additional 2.5%, and this is the way the entire administrative schedule uh, and DSS schedule is, there's an additional 2.5 on top of the fiscal year 25, 1, 4, 20, fiscal year 28, 29, and 30. So he is on, he would be, right now he is on the, um, the initial one because we've already done one other one that has been surpassed, and now everyone's on the initial one. The 121 is what um, the other senior director is on. Does that, does that make sense? All right, thank you. Are there any mm -hmm. other questions? If not, Madam Treasurer, may we have a vote? Point of order. Madam President. Go ahead. We need to vote on pulling 13, 16, and 75 first before we do the um, HR agenda. Okay. So move, is there a second? I'll second. Move the second, are there any questions? So are we voting on? Pulling. Just pulling them, okay. So tabling them technically or something like that. Correct. Okay. Not, Madam Treasurer, may we have a vote? Mm -hmm. Dr. Good, oh, is President Goodwine? Yes. Okay. Mr. Smith? Yes. Ms. Reinhardt? Yes. Mr. Sampson? Yes. Ms. Wigani? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Six yeses. Actually, I want to make a motion to pull one more additional item. I just need some additional information on number 80. You making a motion? Yeah, a motion to pull number 80 till next, to hold till next week. Second. Move the second. Are there any questions? Madam Treasurer, may we have a vote? Okay. President Goodwine? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Ms. Re uh, Ms. Mrs. Reinhardt? Yes. Mr. Sampson? Yes. Ms. Wigani? Yes. <coughs> Dr. Um, Mr. Lacey? Yes. Six yeses. We are back on our original motion that has been moved and second. Are there any additional questions before we ask for a vote? Madam Treasurer, may we have a vote? Okay. President Goodwine? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mrs. Reinhardt? Yes. Mr. Sampson? Yes. Ms. Wigany? Yes. Uh, Mr. Lacey? Yes. Six yeses. Before you move to your next recommendation, Dr. Lawrence, the information that you provided up here compared to the last individuals in those positions, can you pull those resumes and that salary scale just to show the things that you've stated? Thank you. Your next recommendation. Next recommendation is a review of the uh, human resources um, 
agenda for DEA after July 10th. Uh, you'll see uh, two names on there. I move that we accept this recommendation. Is there a second? No, it's no, not for vote. I'm oh, sorry. It's just for review. I Go apologize. Ahead. Are there, are there any questions? <laughs> Seeing none, your next recommendation. Next recommendation for review are contracts, uh, and they are listed there for the board to um, be able to review and ask any questions before a vote next week. Are there any questions? Madam President. Floor is yours. Thank you. Um, if someone can just give me um, an update, give us an update on the Shook, um, the 9.25, uh, what does this entail? Um, what is the timeline of this work being conducted? Things of that nature. Yes, the uh, 9.2 is actually the ESSER money that has been earmarked for the concourse uh, underneath the stadium work with the restrooms, the upgrade of the um, HVAC uh, and the um, air conditioning and the, any of the concourse work um, on both sides that's listed in the Ohio Department of Ed CCIP. So, um, and, and then also just so you know, next week we'll have, a, we'll have the presentation we were supposed to have in December. Uh, Curtis will be here to review where the work is. Timeline is this is occurring <coughs> now um, and um, the um, <coughs> work under the concourse was started before the holiday break and is continuing and still on track. The 9.2 uh, covers that concourse work on both sides. Thank you, Dr. Lala. Thank you, and, Madam and President. A, excuse me, and a portion of the press, and one, a small portion of the press box as well. Thank you, Dr. Lala. Thank you, Madam President. Are there any other questions? And, the, and this 9.2, is this, this is still covered under the funds that we have? It is ESSER money that was approved by the um, Ohio Department of Ed and it's, and it's uh, oh, in the CCIP okay. account under ESSER money, yes. Okay. It hasn't been touched yet. I have a question for you. Can you please just let me know what are the model classroom upgrades and what locations are those occurring? Um, actually, the model classroom is one classroom. It okay. is on the north side of this building. It's where they do professional development and show um, uh, new teachers. They do new teacher professional development to show them how to set up a classroom and that sort of thing. And the upgrades are, uh, the majority of them are uh, technology based. So they're putting up um, updated uh, clever touches and they have to move a thermostat, so part of it is, is what Gilbane's doing that's covering part of that up there. But they're also putting in um, uh, two clever touches in an LED display so that they can show teachers how to actually use that technology in their classrooms because our teachers do have clever touches available, but some of them may come and not know how to use them or, or may need other ideas for expanding the use of them. So the model classroom is, is a staff development center. And second question, can you just just tell us a little bit, the 16 individuals that will be covered under the mental health first aid training, kind of seeing what happened uh, two weeks ago in professional football, what, who are those individuals and kind of where are those individuals located? Um, they're a blend of uh, a representative uh, group of people from uh, the academic coordinators for OEC, school psychs, um, our um, SLPs, and I believe our uh, OT, PT therapists, and nurses. So it's a blend of uh, people from each of those uh, departments under OEC. Any other questions? Seeing now your next recommendation. Uh, next, re next recommendation is um, for um, discussion and then a vote next week is for Stivers to um, do an out of country trip to Milan, Venice, um, Assisi, Florence, and Rome, Italy with Dr. Lolly as their, their uh, oh, that doesn't say that. I knew you were uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's an out of uh, country trip that would be um, uh, approved by this board for them to be able to take that trip March 31st through April 8th, 2023. Are there any questions? I have one question for you. This is a great opportunity. Do any of our other high schools have any type of similar opportunities coming up in this school year? 
our next school year? I have not seen any uh, requests for out-of-country uh, trips with any other schools except Stivers, and I, I don't think I've seen any in the whole time I've been the superintendent. What about out-of-state? Uh, no. Okay. Not, not for classes or groups. I have not seen that except for um, athletic events. Okay. All right. If there are no questions, does that conclude your recommendations? Uh, it concludes my recommendations for tonight. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Madam Treasurer. Okay. Uh, mine is a monthly financial uh, for December. Uh, this is a praise holder until the final the finance committee meets on Thursday. I have minutes for review, minutes for uh, December 13 and December 20, 2022. I don't think you will have a question on those. Donations. We have several donations. Thank you to the donors. Uh, I, we have Alpha Delta uh, Kappa Organization for of Women uh, giving to McKinney Bento uh, six hundred twenty seven dollars and fifty one cents. Brent Flater McKinney Bento two uh, two Kroger gift cards uh, worth hundred dollars. Uh, Dayton Correctional uh, Institution. That is for uh, McKinney, Van no, Bellhaven Elementary School, one to, worth $1,500. Fifth Third Bank for DPS Cultural Engagement and uh, Inclusion. Uh, that is uh, a check of $15,000. Larray and uh, Henry Frisbee. Uh, for McKinney Vento, uh, $100. Gift cards uh, to Kroger, $100. Thank you, donors, until we send you a letter. Are there any questions on the donations? Seeing none, your next recommendation? Next recommendation is purchase orders, purchase, uh, purchase requisitions. They are from different departments. Let's look at them, and if you have any questions, we'll answer. Are there any questions? Okay, board member with Diane. Thanks, thank you, President Goodwine. Um, on the, I'm wondering about, like, on the fleet purchase, the Bow, Towns, and Ford, um, we look at the PO replaces a 2020 supply chain type thing as we look at our fleet of vehicles I mean that's a lot of money and are we doing a lot of forward thinking about vehicles and big buses and what does our fleet of transportation look like I wonder about that and then um, that's one question on the other piece of it is the uh, well the construction uh, restoration for our water damage and our our building and um, yeah those are my couple of questions so um, and our forward thinking around those things and encouraging well our board around the our buildings but the fleet I, what is is this a normal pra are, are we shrinking are we growing and where are we going Um, our fleet currently um, it was bought, I think it was 115 at one time, and then so we had a huge bus order at one time. I think typically what happens is you do about a quarter of your fleet and then turn them over so you don't buy that many at one time. So we're trying to circle back and figure out how we can move forward with that. We have lots of buses we don't use. We have 118 routes, routes over 150 buses. Um, at this point, we're around 12,000 students, um, unless we have Three to 5,000 students come back, I don't think we'll, we'll, we'll be able to use those buses. So we're acting, having active conversations about trading some buses in um, and how we manage um, the totality of that fleet, uh, the buses and the vans and other, other vehicles that we have. And this number is then just to kind of replenish what we already are servicing in a way? Yes. Cool. These were, these were ordered uh, during COVID. Correct. That's are, correct. These are these are some vans that were 
going to be used for transporting students as well, like um, the back and forth, or, or is that not the same one? Uh, that's part of it as well. Okay. Yeah, we've hired several van drivers, and so we're trying to uh, work on um, being able to transport students to school, but also back and forth between schools based on some Right, into the health center. There was, I think there was a van that was ordered for the health center yes. to transport uh, students uh, you know, from different buildings to the health center, and I think it never came in because of the shortage. I didn't know if that was still included in this one or not. Uh, it is. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Board Member Sampson. Oh, sorry, are you done with something? Go ahead. No, no. Um, and a report like on the, the piece of the water damage, can we hear a little bit about that, what that looks like, and what are we looking at moving forward? Do you think, <clears throat> are we looking at a lot more damage, or at the sure, building over uh, here? We had a water main break uh, at Kemp. Uh, we were alerted at 4.30 on Christmas Eve, which would be Christ well, Christmas morning at 4.30. We were on site by 6.30, and um, that damage was cleaned up. It's less than our deductible. Uh, I think it's going to be about $100,000, so we didn't meet our deductible, so we'll take care of that as a district. Um, Kemp is ready to go. I sent pictures of it in my weekly report to you all. It is spotless again. They have an amazing team there. Um, and th thanks to all the custodians who went over during the break to get Kemp ready to open. Ludlow one, different story. Uh, we're going to exceed the deductible. Um, that, um, that is a, um, that's a very difficult situation there. We're still cleaning it up right now. You can see the giant uh, trailer that's out there now. We're excavating and throwing things out. And Sam Hurwitz, Chief Hurwitz, has sent a timeline uh, for everyone to go over and take things out of Ludlow. That are still, let alone one that are still there. We found uh, lots and lots of documents and things on all the floors. Actually, we'd say except for five. Mm -hmm. uh, the treasurer's uh, office, that floor was pretty, pretty much clear. But the rest of the, the building, there are documents and papers in there that need to be destroyed or moved here. And so once we do that, um, we'll get a picture on what the losses are, but they're, they're significant. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Board Member Sampson. Thank you, Madam President. A couple things. Um, first, on the purchase requisition, um, I think it's a, a sale shrunk issue. The Card Integri Integrators Corporation, it says 26,8. I think it's a larger, it's supposed to be 865, it just says 8. So I uh, just wanted to point that out um, in the description. And then also under less than 25,000. If somebody could tell me uh, iPads for student success coaches, 16,000. How many iPads is that and what will the coaches be using those iPads for? And then the second question I have under less than 25,000 is the Legacy Maintenance Service LLC. <clears throat> How long will this emergency professional service be needed at EJ Brown? Um, I'll answer the uh, student success coach. Um, what the student success coaches are doing is tracking attendance and um, finding those students that aren't coming on a regular basis, but also the students that are, that are chronically absent that we do know. So their means of recording all of that's on an iPad as opposed to carrying around a laptop or uh, some type of computer. So we purchased the, uh, we want to purchase the uh, iPads for them just because it's a little easier. Um, they also do home visits, so they're required to record information about the home visit uh, immediately. So that's the reason for the iPads. There are, um, uh, there's one uh, student success uh, coach in each of the buildings, and then there's one that travels between two of our larger buildings. Um, is that correct, Dr. Burton? Um, so, and they're just at the high school level. And will these iPads have, based on the notes that they take out in the community, they're gonna have built-in Wi-Fi in them already that we pay for or something. How's that work? Okay. They, they would be, it would be um, a Verizon or AT&T or whatever the vendor is, yes. Okay. okay. Uh, Board Member Sampson, the services at E.J. Brown have concluded, but we had a purchase order, and they came under that number in the purchase order. So we sent them to transportation also to follow up, and then we also sent them to Valerie. We had some issues there. So we said, hey, since we have the purchase order, let's use it, get them in those spaces. 
And there are some other larger custodial uh, collective bargaining agreements that are associated with that as well that we'll talk about in the future. Right. Thank you, Dr. Lally. Thank you, mm -hmm. Dr. Lawrence. Thank you, Madam President. I had a couple questions. <clears throat> On the iPad purchases, does this number encompass the cost of the data plans or would that be an additional cost? I believe that's an additional monthly cost. Um, is that correct? Okay. There's that one. On the, the vehicle purchases, did those vehicles come with central air? If there, are bus, if, there are, uh, if there are any buses on there, we'll have to make sure that they do because we passed a resolution uh, a year ago that said all of our buses. But I'm not remembering that there are buses on that one. Um, I'll ask Miss um, Kidd to um, pull that up. But I, I thought they were mostly vans and trucks, maybe a couple of trucks and things like that, not uh, buses. But uh, we'll double check that because that was, that was what we did in 2020. Uh, and then the, those items didn't come in. Okay, and the vans here, are those for use with students or are those more operation vans? There could be both on this one. Uh, we, we were purchasing um, some transport vans for, student, for students to be transported at one point, and then uh, we were also purchasing some replacement fleet uh, things for uh, operations, but I'm not sure what's on this particular PO, so uh, we'll pull that up and have that for the board to see. And then Dr. Lawrence can um, uh, talk about any buses or anything that are on there. Okay, and more of a question, not necessarily about the P, the Perkins requisite, requisite. The student ID badges, how, what are our percentage wise of students who actually have IDs now in the district? We, we were at 95% and when they found out they had to have them, I think we went up to maybe 97%. Uh, so I think we're finishing those up in, in uh, all um, honesty, those are uh, being wrapped up and, it, and the requirement caused students to uh, come forward and say that they hadn't gotten theirs and that sort of thing. So that really helped us out a lot, uh, any students that had been missed because they might be absent or something. So I think we're, we're in the upper 90s. All right, thank you. Are there any other questions? Does that conclude your recommendations, Madam Treasurer? Yes. All right. Dr. Lawrence, your recommendation. I'm recommending that we adopt the MOU uh, for Local 627. It's an attendance incentive that uh, denotes an additional hour per day for each day that drivers have a uh, attendance on that day. So when they come to work on that day and work that day, we add an hour to their, uh, to their time. We, it's an MOU, the MOU that we actually had before here in the district. We just brought it up and revised it and recrafted it. I spent significant time with the treasurer's office during the break. Uh, they were instrumental in making sure that this was going to be budget neutral, uh, that I wouldn't exceed the budget. Uh, spent time with uh, Local 627 and also um, with the um, regional OPC person. So we um, we think this is going to increase attendance. We've also assigned a level three clerical to track it. We reserve the right to uh, end this attendance incentive if we don't see improvement in bus driver attendance. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions? Uh, also, I talked to Josh, um, excuse me, Board Member Reiner about it. Um, Carter and we talked about it uh, briefly. She and Dr. Pick and I meet monthly, and then, of course, I've written about it to, to the board, but this is an opportunity to speak to it. All right. Again, second time, any questions for Dr. Lawrence? All right, thank you. Real quick. Ms. Kidd, for the executive session, is a script on here other than this pull up for the reasons? Yeah, no, I see that part I'm talking about. Like, the G's have seven different points. 21.22 G. Okay. Yeah, that's just the only thing, just the red part, correct? Mm hmm. All right, pursuant to section 121.22 G2, the Ohio Revised Code, I move that this board go into executive section. This meeting is being held to consider the employment dismissal of a public employee. Is there a second? Second. 
Moved and second. Are there any questions? May, may, may we have a vote? President Goodwin? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Ms. Reiner? Yes. Mr. Sampson? Yes. Ms. Wigany? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Six yeses. Let the record show that the Board of Education of the Dayton City School District has completed an executive session during which it considered the employment and dismissal of a em public employee. I move that we exit executive session. Do I have a second? All right, it's been moved and second. Are there any questions? Madam Treasurer, may we have a vote? President Goodwin? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Ms. Reinhardt? Yes. Mr. Sampson? Yes. Ms. Wigani? Yes. Mr. Lacey? Yes. Six yeses. Thank you. Give me one second. We are waiting for something to pop up on our screens. Yes, you should read stuff, you know, it's always good. But while we're waiting, let me just show some great stuff here. I have a certificate of appreciation. I just want the world to see that School Board Recognition Month is January 2023. Look at us. Fancy paper and my name is spelled correctly on it. So I appreciate that. Uh, the Dayton Metro Library Foundation is sending out information. Feel free to check that out. Oh, I can give the viewers the halftime scores. Get the scores again. Um, let me give you guys the scores. Oh, new agenda item? What is that? For our viewers at home, Third, third Good Marshall versus Meadowdale. Is in the third quarter, Meadowdale 49, third good 28. Let's see, who else is playing? Belmont versus Dunbar. In the second quarter, Belmont 25. And who else I never played? Yeah. Dunbar 26 or 28 at Belmont. They are at Belmont. Feel free if you guys want to leave here after the game and stop by. And we also have Ponit's Career Tech. Oh, no, that's out. Scratch that. I'm not a good announcer. That's a good job, Chris. It's one more, and I just, I just can't. Oh, it's Stivers. Stivers, for the art, is playing Ponets with Stivers at 31, mm -hmm. third quarter, and Ponets at 51. Feel free to stop by any game as you leave here tonight. Actually, they stopped letting people in at the start of third quarter, so never mind. All
have to come on behind. It's not opening. Okay. Hopefully, you all had a happy new year. Mine is quiet. Did you, did you open it? It's not working. I move that we adopt resolution C, superintendent salary. Is there a second? Second. Are there any questions? Seeing none, may we have a vote, Madam Treasurer? Okay. Right, let me say a couple words first, Madam Treasurer. Hold on. As you're getting that ready. So I do want to note that this is a a 5% salary increase for our superintendent. This is in addition to recognize some of the work that has happened over the last year. This is also honoring a contractual term that we've had with our superintendent and the resolution is online now. We just came to this. This actually that's pretty much all I want to say now. Are there any other questions or comments before we have a vote? Madam Treasurer, now maybe we have a vote. Okay. President Goodwine? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Ms. Reinhardt? Yes. Mr. Sampson? Yes. Ms. Wigany? Yes. Okay. Mr. Lacey? No. Five yeses and one. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. <laughs> moved and second. Any discussion? Seeing none. We are adjourned. Vote. Oh, wait, my bad. Yeah. The vote. Can I have a vote for us to leave? It's been a long night. <clears throat> President Goodwin. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Ms. Reinhardt. Yes. Uh, Mr. Sampson. Yes. Uh, Ms. Wigany? Yes. Okay, Mr. Lacey? Yes. We are adjourned. Six yeses. Now we are adjourned.